we move on now to our final story. <laughs> um, our final story has to deal with uh, YouTube censorship of uh, Graham Elwood. If you're unfamiliar with Graham Elwood, and I, I doubt that you guys are unfamiliar with Graham Elwood. There might be a couple people that are. Uh, Graham is a fantastic comedian. He has a YouTube channel uh, called The Political Vigilante. Um, as you might see that I've called myself the uh, Social Vigilante, which was not a name that I gave to myself, by the way. That is... Uh, a name that somebody else gave to me, and I and I decided to like use it because I thought it was kind of badass. Um, so you know, Graham calls himself the political vigilante. I found out about that years ago. I found out about that when my buddy Ron Placone started touring with Graham, actually. So this was, uh, you know, three maybe three years ago or something like that. Uh, but I like Graham. Uh, Graham's YouTube channel is great. He covers a a, a lot of uh, again just sort of information that you're not going to hear about in the corporate media you're you're not going to hear the corporate media talk about um you know why we need to have a rent strike why we need to support labor movements why socialism isn't a bad word why capitalism unfettered capitalism is 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 a parasite and a plague upon humanity you know um why we need to stand in solidarity together as a, as a collective working class. That's, that's all stuff that you're not going to get. You're going to get from independent uh, comedians <laughs> and journalists. Um, and, and Graham is one of them. Uh, Graham has a great channel. Uh, I highly recommend people subscribe to Graham Elwood. Uh, he's also on Rockfin. I've been trying to get on Rockfin. I haven't gone on Rockfin yet. It's a crypto-based video site. Uh, where every person that uh, gets approved for Rockfin is a uh, is also like it's like a they're also like employees so it's like a, it's like we also own a part of Rockfin they kind of democratize the platform uh, which is great which is what we need um, so on Easter Graham's live stream got taken down and uh, they claim that it was for violating community standards. He gives a lot more detail about it on his channel. Um, and, I, and I would highly encourage you guys to go check out all the details on his channel. But basically, it was just vague. He, you know, hey, you violated community standards. So we can't, we stopped the live stream in the middle of it. And he does a live stream where he, uh, he answers questions. Uh, and he did, talks about articles and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it's very fun. It's cool to watch. I, I enjoy it. And whenever I get, get some time, you know, whenever I'm kind of uh, sending messages or emails, I, I listen to them. Although the email sending now is a lot less uh, than it is now that I'm not touring or contacting press for my tours or contacting groups to come out to see my tours. Um, which, uh, uh, as I'm saying that, I'm just like, God damn it, I really want to get back on the road. But it's fine. We'll get there. Uh, we will be able to get back to touring. I will be able to see all my friends across the country. Um, and, uh, and, and yell about the oligarchy, uh, at your faces, uh, through a microphone. Um, but, um, you know, uh, I would, I would that's when I would watch Gra Graham's live streams and they're fun. I, again, they're super fun. They're super informative. They are very entertaining. Um, but they canceled one of his live streams, just shut it down. Uh, didn't put it up. And, uh, and they said he was violating community standards. So he contacted them. And, uh, you know, there's no real person to, to help right now. Um, and I want to point out this. YouTube did put out a disclaimer at the beginning of COVID-19. I think I caught this maybe, oh boy, when the fuck did I catch this? The couple days afterwards. So it might have been like a week after. Um, you know, some stay-at-home orders had been placed, the social distancing orders had been in place, bars and restaurants had been closed. Uh, and after that, I saw YouTube post a little little thing uh, on the back end where, you know, the, they call it the studio, the YouTube studio, where you upload your videos and stuff like that. And it was basically saying that the algorithm is going to decide what is and isn't acceptable because of COVID-19, they don't have you know, like a real person to adjudicate. So this is the actual message that they said. Uh, I don't know if you can see the whole thing. I did try to pop out one or two of the things. Um, it says, due to COVID-19, we will conduct fewer human reviews to protect the health of our extended workforce. 
Unfortunately, as a result, we may remove content that does not violate our community standards, does not violate our community standards. And this is kind of a bullshit statement because this basically says we are going to practice in censorship uh, and, um, and that's it. Not much you can do about it. COVID-19, you know? COVID-19's happening, guys. You know, we can't, we gotta be safe with our employees. It's like, wait a minute. Why can't your employees... I feel like YouTube should be one of those things where you should be able to work from home. Where you don't need to be at an office. But if they say that, then that means that they don't need that huge fucking where, you know, their, their building with their gyms and their whatever the fuck crazy shit that they have in their non-essential shit, right? This is an opportunistic way of saying if there's content on YouTube that we don't particularly care for, we will just make up some shit. We will just say some shit that it violates our community guidelines and we don't have a human reviewer. So we're just going to fucking take it down. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because we're in a crisis. We're in a global pandemic. Boo hoo hoo. There's nothing you can do about it. Too bad, so sad. And who are the people that are going to suffer because of it? Is it MSNBC? CNN? Is it Fox News? Late Night with Stephen Colbert? The Late Late Show with uh, James Corden where he fucking paraded Nancy Pelosi's ice cream cavern. That offensive shit? Nah. It's going to be Graham Elwood. It's going to be me. It's going to be Ron Placone. Lee Camp. You know, Gray Zone with Anya Parmpil. Act Out with Eleanor Goldfield. All these independent people. That's who they're going to target. And they're going to say, well, there's nothing we can do about it. All of our human people are, are, they're not working anymore. They can't look at this. They can't see whether you did or didn't violate community standards or not. So if you do some anti-establishment shit, if you talk about the technocracy, if you talk about working class people, there's a chance we might just delete your shit. And there's nothing you can do about it. I've noticed certain little things. I've noticed that I'll wake up and I'll check my view count on YouTube, you know, just to check it. I'll check the thing and it'll, one of the videos will say like 22 views and then I'll come back, you know, I'll upload a few things and I'll refresh the page and then it'll all of a sudden that same video will say 12 views. And it's like, where'd those views go? Can't complain. Like, who am I going to fucking go talk to? Uh, D Graham does mention that he that he's in touch with uh, somebody that might be able to help him because like bigger channels like Jimmy Dore has a huge channel so there is a guy uh, that is helping him out and Graham talks about that more in depth on his channel uh, again go check that video out I recommend it but you know the reason I want to bring this up is very similar situation to what happened with me and Spotify last month um, I don't know if you guys caught it, but basically what happened is I got a copyright claim. I tried to find out what was going on with that copyright claim, and uh, Spotify never got back to me about it. Uh, my former, the the I, I was with Anchor.fm as my podcast host. Um, they never got back to me about it, and then 48 hours later, straight up deleted my podcast. No warning, no reason behind it, just a vague copyright claim that they wouldn't tell me about to this day they've not told me anything about to this day i don't know why i got a copyright claim on my podcast that did that got them to just fucking delete my entire podcast my rss feed was gone F fucking over 300 episodes five years worth of work just blipped out ron placone had me on his show to talk about it which is very cool hard lens media they had me on the show to talk about it, which was very cool. But the same thing disappeared an entire episode. Vague, 
oh, violating community guidelines. Oh, you got a copyright claim. Can you explain what that is? And this is before the crisis too. What, what happened to me was before this COVID-19 crisis happened. So they weren't on a skeleton crew. They weren't sending people home with no access to whatever, you know, if they're claiming like, oh, we can't give people access to our servers or what have you. Um, so Spotify had the employees to do it. They restored my podcast and then I moved it immediately to Libsyn, uh, which has meant that I'm going to, you know, I, I have to pay for the hosting. And part of the reason why I chose Anchor was because I didn't have to pay for the hosting, but if that gives them an easier access to delete my podcast over vague copyright claim, because Anchor is also owned by Spotify, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to chance it. So, uh, you know, it's important to talk about this because who's next? And are we going to notice? Are we going to do something about it? Because what if tomorrow, not that this, but let's say Tucker Carlson says something anti-establishment. What happens to his channel? I mean, he'd be fired first. But, um, you know, do we want YouTube to be making these sort of decisions? And they're doing this during a pandemic right now because of a skeleton crew. But they've been doing shit like this before the pandemic. I mean, like I said, the Spotify thing happened before the pandemic. And there's hundreds and hundreds of stories of people's videos getting taken down, demonetized, people's entire channels disappearing. Well, well before the, the, the pandemic happened. And, and, and now it's just an opportunistic reason to say, well, it's the pandemic. We're on a skeleton crew. We can't get to all these things. Bullshit. You are actively censoring people. You are actively going against the First Amendment. You are actively letting people not express their voices because you disagree with what they have to say, because they criticized your platform. And that, that is unconstitutional, and that is un-American. That's some anti-freedom shit right there. And we need to stand up to that. We need to stand up to this bullshit. We need to stand up to this. As a result, we, will, we may remove content that does not violate our community guidelines and then do fucking nothing about it. No. None of that says we will take care of this once we are out of this situation. None of that says we will, we will improve the ranking of your video if your video is wrongfully removed from our platform for this vague violation of community guidelines they don't give you a way to to get out of this situation they're just like it's gonna happen and we're gonna fucking do it and now this this gives them an opportunistic reason to censor content that they don't like and uh and you know it's up to us to keep an eye out on it I do think that we would have seen a lot more had there not been an increase in uh, watching online content. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there's that, uh, you know. So uh, keep your eye out for it and, and keep supporting your independent um, uh, content creators um, because they're the ones that are going to get targeted by this shit the most. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you are new to this channel, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notifications when uh, I put up new videos. I'm going to be putting up videos every single day, so there's going to be a ton of content coming out on this channel. Uh, there's going to be storytelling, uh, commentary about the media, uh, historical commentary, philosophical commentary, all surrounding uh, stand-up comedy. If you, if you like comedic commentary about these topics, then this is the channel for you. Uh, and if you uh, come to the channel often and you haven't subscribed, what, 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 what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Get, get, get subscribed to this. Come, come hang out with us. <laughs> But uh, for more information about me, you can go to my website, uh, ramannoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, while you're there, you can check out all of my past stand-up comedy albums, which if you snag them from Bandcamp, are available as pay-what-you-want, which means that they're uh, available for free. 
Uh, you can check out past videos, you can check out past podcasts, and uh, you can donate if you have the ability to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. You can donate directly on my website and become a sustaining member directly on my website. And Or you can see how, you know, the various different ways that you can make a donation. And you can also find out about live stand-up comedy events. Well, live-ish stand-up comedy events. I'm going to be doing uh, a test show on Zoom. Uh, tickets are available for that right now. They are free, and there's only 10 spots available. This is going to be a test show to find out, you know, what format's going to work, if there are technical difficulties that I need to figure out, and then figuring out uh, what consistent day to try to do... Um, these Zoom shows. I'll probably do a couple of them uh, while we are uh, currently in the quarantine situation. So that is available. Uh, the tickets for that are available right now. There's only 10 spots available. Uh, so make sure that you grab them um, before they're all gone. And then once we decide the date for the first official live-ish stand-up <laughs> comedy Zoom show, the virtual stand-up comedy show, uh, there will be um, about 15 tickets available for the first one. Uh, and then we'll we'll go from there and we'll see see what happens from there. Uh, so grab those tickets and come hang out with us uh, on the Zoom. Uh, like I said, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you hit that like. Make sure that you share this out. Get the word out about these videos. And, uh, and you can go to my website to find out more stuff. Uh, till the next video, take it easy.